Hi, I'm Oliver and this is Mike and we're going to show you a tool for uh, data onboarding called Vizier. Uh, Vizier is designed to support data exploration, data debugging, as well as uh, transforming those process the outcome of those processes into a full ETL pipeline. So Vizier is a notebook tool, much like Jupyter or Zeppelin. So we're going to start by creating a new project or notebook. Specifically, we'll be using uh, a data set from the New York City Open Data Portal, uh, dealing with uh, causes of death in 2018. We're going to start by loading the data set in. Uh, this is a version of the data set from early December. And um, this year does the standard things that you'd expect it to do. Um, detecting types, detecting headers, and once uh, the data gets loaded in, it starts off as just a simple CSV file um, that we upload. Um, again, Vizier can also support uh, connections to S3, uh, different data formats. Uh, essentially, if Spark supports it, Vizier supports it too. Um, so we just loaded the data set in. Vizier figured out uh, that there were column headers. It figured out the types of each, uh, of each column. And um, now we have the data set available to play with. Um, in contrast to other notebook tools, uh, Vizier doesn't just uh, let you program in a notebook, but it also gives you a convenient uh, spreadsheet uh, representation of the data uh, that allows you to directly manipulate the data um, as in a normal spreadsheet. It essentially gives you the best of both worlds as spreadsheet and notebook. Um, as you edit uh, data in the spreadsheet format, uh, the data set gets updated as you'd expect. Uh, but if you go back to the notebook, then all of those changes get recorded as a small script uh, in the notebook. So all of your changes are audit auditable, and if you uh, need to go back to an earlier version, uh, you can. Uh, so one very nifty feature of Vizier is uh, its history and branching uh, capabilities. Uh, so you can go back to earlier versions of the data set, like for example, uh, the version of the data set before we made any of those changes, and um, restart uh, the cleaning process or restart uh, from that point. Uh, you can also snapshot one of these versions and um, share them confident that if you make any other changes, uh, those changes will not be reflected in the snapshot. Okay, so um, let's create a new branch from here and uh, go forward. Okay, so uh, like most notebook tools, uh, you can put in blocks of code uh, to do pieces of analysis or pieces of data cleaning. Um, here, Vizier distinguishes itself because uh, instead of supporting just one language or instead of requiring all of the cells in your notebook uh, to uh, be written in one language, uh, Vizier allows you to combine different languages together. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we support Python, Scala, and SQL right now um, with other languages uh, coming up. So Python, uh, we'll start by doing a simple piece of data exploration. Uh, for example, we might be interested in the uh, we might be interested in the uh, different causes of death represented in this data set. Uh, so we have a simple Python script uh, that figures this out and prints it out. And here you have a simple piece of statistics uh, computed through Python uh, in the data. Um, we might also be interested in uh, visual different types of visualization. So um, one thing uh, we might be interested in doing is uh, counting up the number of deaths by uh, gender, so finding the distribution of deaths uh, by gender in the data set, and just to make sure that uh, what we have is sane. Uh, so we'll start by um, transforming the data using SQL. Um, and Vizier gives you a nice convenient way of running SQL queries. Um, you can show the output of that uh, in a spreadsheet form just uh, as before. But of course, uh, spreadsheets or tables are, are not uh, what we always want to use to visualize data. Spreadsheets are no fun. 
Um, so Vizier also provides a simple uh, plot generator. Now this is great for collaborating with people who uh, aren't familiar with scripting languages. Uh, we do support uh, more powerful uh, plot generation in the form of uh, matplotlib. Um, but if you're collaborating with someone who just wants uh, to get at the data, to, to visualize the data as is, uh, we provide this simple uh, chart tool, which is already fairly powerful. Okay, um, one of the other things we might be interested in doing is uh, visualizing by uh, race ethnicity. Um, so just as before, um, we can uh, extract the uh, the data using SQL, and we can uh, plot the result. Now that we've extracted the data, uh, we can, uh, as before, create a simple plot command uh, to visualize it. Visualizing the distribution by different races and ethnicities uh, over time. And as you can see, the, plot, uh, the trends are fairly stable. Okay, so let's get to the um, really powerful tools that uh, Vizier provides for uh, ETL, and one of those is data validation. Uh, so we've gone through these various, uh, various uh, data exploration uh, steps, and one of the things that we're kind of assuming here is that there are two genders, um, that the data set uh, labels everyone as either male or female which, at least in this version of the data set, uh, does seem to be the case. So uh, we can encode that assumption in the workflow using uh, what we call a lens. Lenses are these, these tools that will uh, take your data and apply certain types of constraints to it, um, apply certain types of assumptions, and if those assumptions don't hold, uh, it'll register an error, and it'll do its best uh, to fix uh, the error. So we're going to use what's called a missing value lens here uh, to uh, register that we expect uh, the, the sex column uh, to be either uh, M or F, the letter M or the letter F. We'll rerun the workflow, and um, everything stays the same because obviously the data is actually correct. Um, however, we also now have uh, an errors tab, which shows us all of the places where there's something uh, unexpected. This error report will go through all of the data and it'll basically show us every place where there is some sort of assumption in the data that isn't handled. Uh, so for example, uh, there's a couple of records where um, there's a period, and the system uh, couldn't cast that to a, a floating point number. Okay, so um, we've gone through, uh, we've shown you how you can use Vizier for data exploration. We've shown you how uh, you can use Vizier for data validation. Now, uh, over time, you're going to get new data sets, and those new data sets are going to have to go through the entire uh, curation process. So we actually went back to the New York City Open Data Portal, and uh, they updated it in mid-December. We grabbed a version of the new data set. And let's see what happens when we load that new version uh, into uh, Vizier. So it'll go through the entire process. It'll, as before, uh, load it, see if there are headers, uh, see what the types are. Um, it'll apply the constraints. It'll apply uh, all of the transformations. And uh, if we go to uh, the Errors tab, one of the things that we'll see here is that uh, all of a sudden there's a, a new uh, bunch of errors. Uh, so, so in particular, there's now 286 uh, errors uh, where the system had to repair uh, a piece of data. Now that's weird. Uh, so let's. Uh, go to see where those errors are showing up. And there's a record from 2016 that um, we had, that the system had to, uh, decided that it had to fix. Let's go back to the notebook and uh, take a look at um, the uh, 
version of that data set that got loaded in. OK. Um, I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can spot what the mistake is here. So what happened is that when they updated the data set, they added two new years worth of data uh, for 2015 and 2016. And in the new data, they used a different code book. Uh, specifically, gender was uh, now specified as uh, the word male and the word female rather than the letter M and the letter F. Now this is a, the type of problem that would completely uh, wreck um, a uh, scientific workflow afterwards if you didn't notice it. And with Vizier, those errors show up in the error report. Obviously, what we'd like to do uh, is fix it properly. Uh, so Vizier made um, a half-hearted attempt in order to fix uh, these records using a classifier. Uh, but uh, we'd like to uh, repair the data ourselves uh, so that we know we're doing it correctly. Uh, so we're going to inject a piece of SQL uh, that repairs this by grabbing the first letter of uh, each word and hopefully that will fix things for us. Uh, we could also use Python, um, any of the uh, data transformation tools that we have. Uh, we can provide a, a small uh, script, add it to our workflow to make sure that everything is uh, correct. And if we go back to the errors tab, we can see that the errors uh, have been, uh, that that particular error has been fixed. Okay. So let's keep looking at the data. And, well, that's weird. Um, one, or actually it seems like possibly two, of our trend lines completely drop off in 2015 and 2016. This is a bit of a problem. Let's see what we can do. Well, first thing, we're going to need uh, to visualize the data uh, a little more effectively. So let's actually uh, break out the big guns, use matplotlib uh, to visualize the data. So, well, the plot command uh, is a, a nice and convenient way to, to visualize the data. Uh, we also support um, other forms of visualization, in this case, matplotlib. And uh, you kind of need to squint at it a little bit here. Um, I'll give you a few seconds to try and figure out what the mistake is. Once again, uh, the code book has changed. Um, we've got non-Hispanic black and black non-Hispanic. And just like before, uh, we could write a small script to change this. Uh, and we can also register a uh, lens to um, help us find when this type of error occurs in the future.